Hello viewers. Again, my name is John Francis Mudishan. Uh, I am a professor of public health and the vice chancellor of Cambridge University, Uganda. I had started with some of you uh, a little while ago and we had some um, breakdown in communication. But we are talking about the changing landscape of university education in the 21st century. Uh, welcome to Cavendish University Uganda uh, Facebook page. You can invite your friends to view us live uh, just now and, and, and join in uh, as we discuss the changing landscape of university education in the 21st century. So for those who are just joining in now, I just mentioned that there is a lot of change that is affecting university education today. Number one, we are shifting emphasis from teaching to learning. And so that means that the emphasis is also no longer on contact hours, but on learning outcomes. What do I mean? Traditionally, the universities were emphasizing how much time a professor is in class attending to the students. Today, the question is on what has the student been able to learn and what are they able to do after going through a particular session of teaching and learning. So the emphasis is not on inputs, but actually on the outputs. Not how, much, how long I teach, but how much actually the students learn. So it actually means that university education in the 21st century is no longer teacher-centered, where people used to look at professors, indeed as philosophers, and you go in to listen, and then they come and speak quite often to themselves. Today, a lot of emphasis is on the learner. What is it that they should know? What is it that they should be able to do after going through this particular session? And how relevant will this be to them when they begin working after leaving the university? This is the focus today. So we are trying to respond to so many things. One of them is the changing job market. Industry today, the different organizations that employ people want graduates who are able to begin working from day one and immediately become productive, begin to add value to their various jobs. Universities which keep teaching in the traditional way are not going to pull this through. And so they will disadvantage their students. The second point is that there is changing technology. Today, whether you are a student of computer science or information technology, it doesn't matter. The job you are going to do will require the use of information technology in one way or another. So dynamic universities like Cavendish University Uganda have now made information technology a generic course unit for all the students, regardless of what they are studying. And it's not only computer science and information technology. It's also about critical thinking. It's also about communication skills. It's also about accounting. Because regardless of what you study, you are going to manage. You need to account for results, but also for money. You need to examine documents and to make reports. So you need communication skills, both written and actual oral communication. You need to critique documents, and so you need critical thinking skills. And you need to use computers and technology, and so you need IT skills. So modern universities have crafted what we call genetic courses that all students must study in order to be able to fit in the current work environment. And this is the difference that these changes are actually making. 
I have observed that students who are entering universities are changing. We are beginning to see students that want to keep working but at the same time study. So how can you keep running the traditional classrooms? Today we are beginning to talk about the flipped classroom model, where what students use to get from the classroom, they actually get it at home through a platform, a learning platform. And so when they come to class, they are only coming to discuss the application of what they learned from home to various job settings. This is actually what makes them not only employable, but also innovative and entrepreneurial. This is the direction we are taking. At Kavirish University of Uganda, for those who have just joined us, I have mentioned that we have developed an academic model which helps us to provide market relevant, transformative quality education that produces graduates who are responsible, educated, employable, and entrepreneurial. When they get jobs, they are able to begin working and to begin adding value from day one. But also, it means that the education system, the service that we provide is able to help them to ask the relevant questions, to solve the problems in society, and so actually also to employ themselves. And we have quite a number of examples of students from here that have set up a number of organizations and are employing themselves and others. Others are also doing it while they are still learning. And I think that's part of the response to the dynamic education environment or academic environment uh, that universities are operating in, that actually we are able uh, to produce such a results. Somebody asked a question. Uh, that I had earlier asked about accommodation. Is accommodation guaranteed? How much do for the students pay in rent? Uh, this is easy. Ah, yes. Uh, thank you very much for joining in online and for this question. Kavendish University Uganda does not have its own uh, students' hostels, but we have partnered. Uh, we have partnered with individuals and a few organizations that have got decent accommodation around the university within the vicinity and so some students reside in those uh, identified uh, rented houses for students our department of the dean of students is able to help you uh, what we do apart from signing an mou with such providers we also go in there and make sure that they have appropriate security, sufficient and required sanitation uh, within the hostel, and that both security and health of the students will not be compromised uh, when the students are And once we ascertain that, we advise students. Uh, Uh, costs vary from one place to another, depending on, on, on where you want to stay. Um, but our students always afford it, and we've not had any cases where students are complaining about, um, about accommodation uh, fees being high. That's why many of the students actually stay here. Um, those are from within the country and are not having no, by any uh, legal always I negotiate for the new students to come in so that the old um, can go into the world and then begin to add value. Uh, let me take you through. some other things we know that there is an employment in a number of countries and universities 
should now be trying to contribute to the solution to solving that problem of unemployment. And unfortunately, quite often we might think that by continuing to train people and giving them degrees, we are actually helping solve the problem of unemployment. No. Universities need to focus on employability. We need to ensure that there is a sufficient mix of theoretical knowledge and practical skills. I have talked about generic skills. We need to give generic competencies and skills which are required in a dynamic job market. And I have talked about IT skills, critical thinking skills, accounting skills, communication skills. Those will be required by every graduate. And so, universities which want to solve the problem of unemployment or contribute to the solution have got to focus on that. The other thing is about engaging industry practitioners in training. If we want to solve the problems of industry, why should we train students in isolation and then we send them to industry? At Cavendish University of Uganda, we have decided to partner with industry. In fact, under one of our schools called the School of Working Adult Programs, there is a professor teaching alongside a highly experienced industry practitioner, both involved in the teaching, they involve in assessment, they involve in examining the learning outcomes and making sure that the students are in fact able to do the work and add value. We have also decided to partner with the alumni because they know how we do things, but they are in the world out there working and they see where there can be a mismatch. So this is the part of what modern universities should do. It's actually what we are doing. But also, I think universities need to focus on entrepreneurship. We should not produce graduates and send them out into the world when they are not able to make a business plan, when they are not able to write a project proposal. We should not train students to go out and begin looking for jobs. Rather, the question should be, what problems am I going to solve? By trying to solve these problems in society, they will end up getting jobs, they will end up employing themselves, they will also end up, by the way, employing others, or adding value to the jobs that they get. At Cavendish University of Uganda, we try to help students to develop their ideas in teams, not as individuals, because we know that there is synergy the sum total of ideas from a team is superior, both in quantity and in quality, to any ideas that any one individual could possibly come up with. And so we are encouraging team formation. And most of our entrepreneur, uh, entrepreneurship groups of students are successful because people work in the teams. Um, I'm trying to look at the questions that are coming in. I want to thank those who are asking questions. Somebody is asking, I want to know how continuing students can apply for scholarships. And this is Shamamba Alain. Uh, thank you very much, Shamamba. At Kavirish University of Uganda, we have uh, different categories of scholarships because our aim is also, is also to uh, give access to higher education. Uh, if you are a continuing student, first of all, you have what we call student referrals. It's a discount. When you refer a student, a new student, or even a continuing student, you get 10% of your tuition. It means if you refer two, that is 20%. If you refer 10, you don't pay anything. And the logic is simple. If the cost of training students at Cavendish University is one billion, and you have got only one student, it means he has got to, he or she has got to pay one billion. But if they are ten, it means they they will share one billion, and each student will pay one hundred million. I'm just giving an example. 
So as many students as you have, it means they can be able to share the total cost of training a student, and so the unit cost will come down. So refer students, if you're a continuing student, one, you will get immediate benefits, because for every student, you will get 10% of your tuition, but if the students become many, actually, or the, the overall tuition fee could either stay constant amid the rising cost, costs, or could even come down. That's simply the economics of it. Uh, thank you very much, Shamamba. But you also know that we have merit scholarship uh, scholarships, uh, students who got above 12 points and three principal passes, we have an entry exam. And once they pass it, they can join whatever programs of their choice here at Cavendish University of Uganda as uh, merit scholars. And we have quite a number of them uh, doing a good job. I can see another question. I just enrolled this semester. That's Julie. I'm doing information technology. I want to innovate something. I know my dream will come true and I will make Cavendish famous because success begins doing information technology uh, or computer science that have come up with different apps. And I just mentioned some. Uh, that that participated in the parliamentary technology uh, week. You saw some of the students from Cavendish University of Uganda. Some of you could have watched them uh, on 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 on, on Booked and on, on on NBS and other televisions, trying to showcase uh, the innovations that they have come up with. So, Julie, this is possible. Others have done it, and you can do it. You have our full support. Uh, just keep uh, your goals high, not even the sky will be the limit. Somebody, Abdullah, Lower, He says, I would like to know about the dissertation for master's students and why there are delays in the final revival almost all the time. Thanks a lot. Uh, thank you very much, Abdullah. I think you must be one of our continuing students if you are talking about the revival. Uh, we thank the continuing students who are able to tune in uh, to have a chance to uh, engage with us also on this platform. I will try to get into the bottom of this, but the oral defense or viva vote is an inter interface where we ask master's students to come and take us through the research they have done so that we get to be sure that they are the ones who did the research, who collected the data, who analyzed the data, who wrote the recommendations, who did everything and wrote the report. So sometimes we want to do this in teams because we bring in external resources. We might want to bring external resources and you cannot bring them for one person all the time. So you always try the team and then you bring in uh, resources to attend to a team of students in one or big oral defense. That could cause some delays. But we are careful to make sure that all oral defense sessions are organized in time for our students to be able to graduate when they should graduate. We take this very seriously and uh, we will stick to it. But if there are any other delays, please uh, let us know uh, through our quality assurance directorate and will be attending to that so that no student delays, especially our international students who want to go back to their countries immediately after completing. Nothing should hold them here. Uh, uh, certainly not anything like the delay in organizing the, the viva. Thank you, Abdullah. Uh, 
Um, yeah, I can see others joining in. Those who have just joined in, I am Professor John Mbisha. I am the Vice Chancellor of Cavendish University of Uganda, and I'm a Professor of Public Health. We are talking about uh, changing dynamics, the changing landscape of university education in the 21st century. And we are saying that higher education, university education, is meant to feed into industry to spur social economic development. Because there are changes in industry, we must also have changes in higher education. There are also changes in the feeder schools that give us students. The whole environment, the economic environment has changed. And so because of this, also the models of teaching have got to change. The pedagogy that we apply and the techniques of teaching have got to change. But also the curricula have got to change. So that what we teach students are those that are going to respond to the needs of the world in which universities operate and to which universities want to add value. Um, just checking for some other questions. Uh, somebody is saying thanks, Prof, for the information given to us about dissertation. Thank you very much uh, for your quick response. Um, Abdullah. So we have just been mentioning that universities which want to help students fit into the current environment have got to change their focus. They will have to combine specialized education according to the discipline that people are studying with a cocktail of generic competencies that students will need when they go to begin working. Electrician, electrical engineers are now struggling to use IT. Computer engineers are struggling to account for resources because they are managers. People who never studied the communication skills are struggling with report writing because we are working under tight conditions where our employers need fine tuned, well analyzed reports. And people go out without studying some of these skills, because they are not part of their curriculum. At Cavendish University of Uganda, we combine these specialized technical skills with generic competencies. And I have mentioned information technology skills, communication skills, critical thinking skills, accounting skills. By the way, also, basic legal knowledge, legal education, to help you survive in the world of work. Uh, so those who want to join us, we are still taking in students. Enrollment is ongoing till uh, the 25th of February for this semester. I have just mentioned that students get 10% discount for every referral, if you refer a new student, you get 10% discount. If you refer a second one, you get another 10%, that becomes 20. If you refer five students, that's 50% discount of your tuition fee. And I have mentioned that the reason is simple. It's because if the cost of providing university education was 100 million, and we have only one student we are teaching, then we would require the student to pay 100 million. But if you had 100 students, they would share that 100 million, and so every student would pay only 1 million. So when you are referring students, you are helping yourself in two ways. One, you get this 10% discount. But two, the overall tuition fee uh, level will not go high. It can, in fact, come down if we get many students. Because how we get unit cost, we get total cost, divided by the number of students, simply. 
That's how we determine the unit cost. So, and that's how we levy the tuition fees. So bring more students, you will get the referral discount, but also you will keep down uh, the overall tuition fee level. But also it's because we know and we believe uh, that we are giving correct education for the current times. You are welcome to join Cavendish University of Uganda. I want to say something else uh, about modes of study. I have mentioned that the current students are not, uh, who need university education are not only those who have left senior six. No. There's what we call university enrollment ratio. World over, university enrollment ratios tell you something about the level of involvement. For countries like Canada, the university enrollment ratio is up 50%. For most of the medium income countries, Canada is a high income country, the university enrollment ratio is about 25%. In Uganda, the university enrollment ratio is about 10%. It actually tells you that we have fewer people going to university than those who actually qualify to go into the university or are expected to go into the university. So the, the whole issue of competition doesn't even arise. What now we need to talk about are flexible modes of study that would help the students who cannot secure, for instance, study leave or who cannot leave politics if they are politicians to be able to study and keep in the parliament. Study and keep, in, keep working as a division commander. Study and keep working as an inspector of police or a commissioner of police. Study and keep working as an archdeacon or a parish priest or a bishop. And I'm glad to mention that we have a couple of such high profile students at Cavendish University of Uganda. Uh, we want to thank you for responding to uh, our dynamic programs and, and, and models of study, for instance, under the School of Working Adult programs, where we give you a tablet, it's a handheld computer, it is loaded with all the content, clear learning outcomes, in fact, also a quiz to test yourself. You go throughout the week, you read. And so over the weekend, you come not to read again, but to discuss some of the difficulties you faced, the challenges, and also the application of what you have been reading to your job. And you meet the industry expert, you also meet a professor. This is the dynamic education that dynamic universities today need to give if we are to respond to the needs of the changing landscape in university education in the 21st century. If you want to see this, come and join the big team that we already have at Cavendish University of Uganda that is able to testify uh, to the benefits of using technology and flexible models of study uh, in higher education. I have mentioned before that our emphasis is on providing what we call transformative education. Education that turns the learners into responsible, educated, employable, but also entrepreneurial citizens. Um, I want to try and check for more questions. Uh, people are simply giving us um, Thumbs up. Thank you very much uh, for tuning in. And for those who have just joined, I am Professor John Mudisha. I'm a professor of public health and the vice chancellor of Cavendish University, Uganda. I'm trying to take you through the changing landscape of university education in the 21st century. We are talking about skills for employability. When you look at the traditional curriculum, a curriculum 
is what God is teaching and learning in terms of methodology, in terms of content, in terms of structure for any particular program. When you look at those that are traditional in, in nature, they focus on only the technical content. There isn't much talking about skills of employability. For instance, how do you prepare for an interview? I've conducted a couple of interviews and I've seen people that are clearly not ready. You look at the dress code, you are able to tell that this person is actually not ready. First of all, you need to dress decently if you get the job. So why don't you show that you are up to the task when you are coming for the interview? But then you realize that these people actually are very innocent. They are not exposed to this. So how do you appear for an interview? How do you pre uh, prepare for it? How do you even apply? But once you have gotten onto the job, how do you retain the job? How do you grow in the job? These are things that we, many universities do not teach. But in our paper, that focuses on general employability skills, we teach this as a generic course unit to all our students. They need to get jobs, they need to go to retain the jobs, they need to grow in the jobs, but also they need to add value to the jobs. Universities today have got to prepare themselves to help their students succeed in that area. I have said that the key focus now is not to prepare yourselves and your students to ask the question, what am I going to do after university? No. Your students should be prepared to ask the question, what problem am I going to solve after university? Those who are looking for problems to solve, they will see so many. They can be able to mobilize resources. People out there are looking for opportunities to participate actually in solving problems. But there is nobody identifying the problems and there is no one creating a framework where actually this can be done. I have one of the students at Cavendish University, Uganda, who recently came up with an organization called Wellbeing Foundation. It has got eight body members and all are Cavendish University students. They are already operating in this city, in Kampala. Their focus was on improving women's menstrual hygiene and nobody was focusing on that area. In fact, in some of the cultures in the country, when a younger girl gets into the menstruation age, she begins to miss classes, people laugh at her, and no one gives assistance. So when this young man, these young people came up with this idea, they immediately got funding. They got 10,000 US dollars, to implement the project at uh, the pilot phase of the project and in about three months time they are expecting one hundred thousand US dollars to do the entire project so the question should be what problem am I going to solve the moment current universities train their students to pose the right questions and to think about the right answers we will solve the problem of unemployment. We will solve the problem of employability, uh, lack of employability skills. But we will also solve the vast majority of the problems affecting our society. Then higher education will be relevant to the community around it and will help indeed to spur social economic development of the country. I want to thank you uh, for joining us on this. I want to thank those that have posed some questions and those who have participated in various ways. 
uh, enrollment at Kaveri University of Uganda is still ongoing until the 25th of this month. We have also merit scholarships for students that, are, that, have, that, that scored above 12 points and have got three principal passes. There is uh, an entry exam to do here. And we have referral discounts of 10% for every student that you bring in. We have flexible modes of study and we partner with the industry to be able to give a sufficient mix of required skills, knowledge, competencies, but also attitude that will help our students to get jobs, to add value to the jobs, to retain the jobs, to grow in those jobs, but also to start jobs. Again, I am Professor John Mujisha, the Vice Chancellor of Cavendish University. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, till next time, come and join Cavendish University of Uganda. Success begins at Cavendish. Thank you.